something about sticking on rather than having something painted on. Sometimes when it's a flower and it's so bright and uh, iridescent and all the rest of it, it, it needs to be imposed upon the paper rather than drawn out from it. So it was just a little bit of wallpaper I found in here. Um, and it's maybe not the brightest, but it's something. And I wanted to inject colour before it lost the will to live. I'm just rummaging here now through the paper, the collage paper, as you can probably hear. There isn't anything jumping out at me. So what I'm going to do is create my one bright yellow buttercup yellow paint. Um, cadmium yellow, I'd say. I think cadmium yellow would be the one. You get different cadmiums, like cadmium hue and all the rest of it. So I'll put some of that there and then And I think different brands look slightly different too. Different cadmiums look different. But any bright yellow, really. Any bright yellow. Let me look at it and consider, is this the colour I'm aiming for? And it might be also that I could use some of that behind this, with a little buttercup hiding behind the daisy there. And then the daisy itself has a a centre that's not unlike that, but I think it has more of a hint of um, maybe burnt sienna about it, the centre of the flower there. You can see how, like, I think less is more, and really, it's lovely to just get my hands dirty like this and start to play and start to try and find a response to what's there. Not, you know, I feel like, I, of course, because I'm running the course, I kind of want to have some success here. But I'm actually, I think, I don't know how honest this is now, but I think I'm prepared to sacrifice success for playfulness and experimenting and exploring. And I guess for you, I want to pass that on to you, that, you know, try to move forward in faith and courage and to, as soon as you feel... Um, you know, a fearful thing come in. Challenge yourself to do something um, dynamic and free in general and be willing to risk losing it all. Because in the end, we're, we're not here that long. We might as well have fun. And like, I think from that place, often, often things, things do become satisfying. I mean, it's a risk, but I think it's quite a nice, um, sometimes, it's a nice surprise for yourself when you when you take a risk and you think, oh, actually, that that's quite a, a you know that appeals to me or whatever. Rather than kind of having something that's drawn out perfectly and coloured in, and then you know where you know. I don't know. I suppose I say that, but like I also am satisfied when things feel like they sit where they are in the image and. Um, like I'm noticing that actually those days, the daisies and the buttercups, they probably are higher up than what I've got them. So I suppose as soon as I notice that, I might as well put them higher up. But I can leave the ones that were there before. So it's like you've you've still got the, still got the finding marks, of the ones that were there originally. And maybe that that, um, buttercup needed, in the first place to be higher. So with collage, you can at least lift it off and stick it on higher up again. Um, and I think I will diminish some of the, some of that, I've lifted off a little bit so that it's not um, distracting me. Where do I put my kitchen paper? And I don't want that to be greenish there, so I'll lift it off a bit more. Okay. All right, and then what next, I wonder? Hmm. I suppose I could just focus on kind of explaining those daisies again um, possibly using the the background space a bit maybe. Maybe I'll just try that. 
And I want to explain, I think, the jog again by using the background space too. Of course, the daisy will come up a bit higher as well now. So I'm going to use my thumb and you know how I lifted off the daisy earlier? But now what I'm doing is I'm um, putting it on. I'm putting on the, the light quite thickly over the background colour so that leaves us the space where the daisy will be. And instead of the daisy being there, I'm going to paint the piano in there as I recognise that it needed to be lifted a bit higher. Because I think it's helpful for them to be quite effulgent out over the, the top of the cup. I don't want them to be um, meek and, <laughs> you know, reticent in any way. These are exciting flowers. Um, and then I can also paint the edge up to meet the stem so that I'm getting feeling of the character of the flower and then the stem of the the stem of the buttercup as well um, can be more clearly found um, of course I might need to actually put on some more green and use a different brush the more you can vary your brushes the better because you end up keeping your colours cleaner then I'm just making myself a green with some Cadmium yellow, some um, hooker's green. Should show you really. Cadmium yellow, hooker's green, and white. I think I need a bit more cadmium. And maybe a bit of brown to dull it down just a little bit. Because I want this to read as the stem. More brown. I want it to read as the stem of the buttercup. Printing with my finger to subdue it a little bit. I felt like it was just a little bit bright. Yeah. And if it's a bit fuzzy at the edges, you can always re-establish the um, stem by painting the background up to meet it again. Which I'll probably do in a second. And that's going up to meet that daisy there. Sometimes you might find that you don't have to do all the things. Like, part of me like, looks at this, and sometimes going back and looking at a video, I think, I could have stopped way earlier, and it's enough. You don't have to be so literal all the time. Like, um, but anyway... I'm going to make my piano colour again with the blue and brown. And then in order to... I like these brushes because they have a firm bristle and they let me make a clear mark so I can, can easily explain the edge of a stem, for example. You know? So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to make the stem a little bit more clear here. And I don't so much feel the need to explain the exact port and the, it's not a botanical painting of a buttercup I'm after, it's a joyful explosion of a buttercup that I'm after here. That's what I'm kind of interested in more than the botanical correctness of a thing. Although that's important too to notice it, but it doesn't all have to be described. And then there's also some dark around these ones here. Again, to maybe explain a little bit of a stem. As, as you work, you might find that the painting is telling you where it wants you to go next, or you're drawn to a certain part and not to other parts. And, you know, within reason, like, it's good to build in pauses too and step back so that you're not just motoring on, responding to every single thing, um, but, but that you stop and, and take stock a little bit. I'm wondering if I'm doing that enough. Accident. I'm not so sure about the. I'm not so sure about the um, brownish colour there. I think I want it to be more blue, like the rest of the background was. And also make it such a slightly different quality of mark, so more fluid and going in that direction. As I look at it again, sometimes it's handy to turn it upside down because it, it gives you an idea of where you might want to go next. Maybe just a little bit of a dark there. But when you turn it back up, you know, you've got a fresh eye. And maybe a little bit of a dark here. And some touches probably back there too. Okay. I just want to find.
seen some clarity again. Mm -hmm. A single colour of green might be good to, to paint to, to place down a leaf because it feels like all of that is a little bit nondescript and I want to bring something in that's a bit clear there. Something just like a leaf that will extend across. that triangle shape wasn't good. I didn't want it to be a triangle and I wanted it to be slightly lighter. So that's why I'm selecting this piece. I think it's okay. I think it so that it ends here. And then I could use the same piece elsewhere. Like maybe there as it comes down to meet the rim of the cup. And then I may just take a piece of this wallpaper and there's a little leaf that overlaps the cup on this side. I quite like the look of. And I might do another one because there is another one in the setup that's coming out here. And I feel like I want to still use a bit more of the brown and blue mix to clarify a bit more the buttercup on the left side there. This one. I feel like I want to do something here to create, I guess, to create the stem. I don't know about this side. I'll try it. And then I bring, I don't want to fill it, as, a, as I say now, I don't want to fill it all in again now or anything. But just here and there, I want to clarify the dark. It seems like there's a constant dance between order and chaos. Um... to clarify things and then not too much either in noticing so you're fairly astute as you work I think so that you kind of notice when something feels like it's going to take you in a direction you want and when something is leading you off somewhere you're not so inspired by I didn't want that blue there I want a few more brown on that side Not quite that brown, so I peel some of it off again. Okay. okay, so we'll make some daisies happen, what do you think? Could just do that daisy there because the others are daisyish enough, I think. So I could just maybe indicate this one that's here again by making the shape of the white, the brightest part, and then it's a little bit darker on that side. So I could maybe make a color a new brush again. I could maybe make myself a, a slightly gray. Use the brown and blue mix, I think, mixed with the white in order to make a colour for the petals that are not quite as bright as those ones on this side. Just putting white into the brown and blue. I've got something then that makes it read more as um, slightly dull. dull white petals. I'll find somewhere here that I can use them as well because it's increasing the volume of them a little bit. Again, 
I don't feel like I have to be too literal, but I, I do want it to read as the, the kind of character of the daisy. I want it to feel like it, you know. I want it to feel like it. I'm just going to re-establish the front of the cup again. Okay. I feel like I'm almost there with this, you know. I know it's, some might say, fierce unfinished. But I think like the Japanese book, eating, it's no harm to finish when you're 80% full. You can always go back and read maybe a little bit more later on. But um, I think I feel satisfied enough with that, you know. I feel like there's enough, there's enough there. And, um, and I've had enough of this kind of <laughs> stuff everywhere. You know, and I've, I've got bits and pieces flailing about everywhere here, so I want to tidy myself up and um, in my hands and go for a swim. That's my plan. But I'll show you first what happened anyway, closer up, so you can see. This was the reason. Oh, for goodness sake, sorry. You can see the reason in the madness kind of thing. Trying to just capture something of the effulgent feeling of those, the stagger, the three, the three daisies, the brightness of the of the buttercups shooting off on either side. And just an indication of the re the contrast between the background of the piano in the background and the brightness of the flowers and some indication of the vessel that they're sitting in but so so that it doesn't take from the flowers. And of course, it, it all got a bit messy there. So I tried to make something cohesive happen with the leaf collaged on over the top that I tore from this piece of paper. And I wanted to make a clarity to around the stem so that was a piece of paper stuck on and then some cadmium yellow over the top for that, that buttercup. And I wanted to clarify the stems a little bit as well to bring in just that little bit of order. So it's, it's a kind of like a dance between order and chaos all the time. And Francis Bacon said about his work, he said, I want to have order in my work, but for it to have come about through chaos. And this is something that is kind of a dance that I recommend you embark on as well. And maybe... Maybe let yourself tip over into chaos a little bit more than order, because in our lives generally, I feel like we're inclined towards order and forced really to to kind of abide by rules. And here, there there are no rules really, and there is no life or death. Carry on if it goes pear shaped, you'll have learned something, you'll have played about and got yourself dirty. I put on this old tablecloth here. Um, because I think it's important that you feel free too, you know? So really do your best to find a space where you can, where you 